Are you interested in using a remote job as your gateway to leave South Africa or have the option to do so at any time? Um, we have lots of South Africans who are working with us online in remote jobs with our company Supported Ventures. So I just wanted to talk about this and the idea that if you're someone who lives in South Africa, you could work remotely for a company in the US, UK, Canada, Ireland, or places like that. And at any moment, if things got really bad and you no longer wanted to live in South Africa, you could just get on a plane and um, get out of there. Now, this is something a lot of people have done um, because quite honestly, to basically say the brutal truth of life in South Africa, it's a wonderful country. It's, um, you know, the people, can be so kind there and it can be such a great vibe um but there are also lots of problems in the society and there's lots of um violence let's say and you know we get to hear a lot about it in a job um working with support adventure working with people in south africa and it's a little bit heartbreaking to hear the stories um you know just the, the hijackings the murders all of that sort of stuff it you know, but a lot of people um, from South Africa really love their country. But that doesn't mean that you don't need a backup plan. And what we found is that um, people who are working from South Africa and sign up through our company Support Adventure to work with um, one of our clients in the US or UK or Canada, they very much have a backup plan and a way out of South Africa. They have income that is not tied to the South African rand. And they actually, you know, they can get out if they want to. They can start the process. They can think about it, take their time to slowly pack up their belongings and move to another country. So it is a possibility that you can find a job. And it's, it's even better, you know, like it's awesome, like uh, for our people in South Africa to even stay in South Africa and work with us because it, it just um, takes away on the amount of friction that they have to have dealing with local bureaucracy, the local economy, um, which is obviously not as rich as, you know, the UK or US uh, in terms of the economic opportunity. And, you know, even if you stay in South Africa, a remote job can be really good for you. But um, yeah, if you need to leave, then the best stepping stone is probably a remote job because a lot of the time people, when they move to another country, they tie up all the loose ends, they quit their job back home, sell their business, whatever it was, sell their farm, whatever it was. And then they go to a new place and they start completely fresh. What if you could build a career online and have a job that over a weekend you can change the country and you know just log on on Monday morning, work the same job the same way you were before? What if that was a possibility? Well, with Support Adventure, it is. Now, unfortunately, we only hire for um, IT support roles and uh, as technicians and supporting roles. Um, so if you're in any other industry, you're going to have to look elsewhere. But if you are an IT technician or um, somebody who's interested in working like in a more administrative or, um, you know, um, helping out role for that, um, you can apply on our website, Support Adventure. Now I'm going to talk about a little bit about where where you can move. So um, say you do get that job in South Africa and you get something that's good money for South Africa, then um, it means that you're going to be on that income level that if you move to uh, the United States with that same salary, it's probably not going to be sufficient. And I will say that you probably want to go to a country with you know similar or um, or lesser uh, cost of living. A lot of people think that immigrating uh, to another country for a better life means going to America, going to Western Europe, uh, UK, Australia, or someplace like that. And I'm here to tell you that it does not have to be, especially in the age of remote working. Like why live in a place where um, the, the cost of living is three times as much as another place, um, if considering that the you know, quality of life is pretty much the same? Why would you pay three times as much? There, there's, um, it's, it's like sort of a hangover of thinking from, you know, in the past um, when, you know, you had to go and work somewhere. You had to live in the city, go to an office every day and all that sort of stuff. That's not the case anymore. I do recommend that you do get a job working for companies that are based in the US, UK, Canada, Australia, you know, places like that. But 
my recommendation is that you go to a place with a lower cost of living. So where are these places? Well, I would say Eastern Europe, Latin America, Southeast Asia. My um, three favorites are Mexico, Serbia, and Thailand. Um, for my style, those are the ones I found you know, palatable because of the ease of integrating as a uh, foreigner, gringo, farang, whatever you want to call me. Um, places like that tend, tend to be a similar um, cost of living as South Africa. You know, it's like, you know, what's a good salary? Like, um, you know, you can have a very decent life for between one and 2,000 US dollars per month. If you need, if you have a whole family, you might need a bit more. It depends how big a house you want to have. Depends if you want to have a car or you want to move into a nice uh, city center or you want to live in the countryside. It's all different. But, um, you know, this, the amount of money that stuff costs uh, when you translate it into US dollars would be similar in um, a lot of places in Latin America. Eastern Europe, Southeast Asia, as it is in South Africa. So this is important to consider. And also, it's a lot easier to get into those countries than it is to get into the United States or UK. You know, everybody in the world, everybody from Asia, Latin America, Eastern Europe, they all want to move to America. They all want to live, you know, get that house in the suburbs. And, you know, I'm from Canada and it's, it's full of people from all over the world who have just been sold on this, um, you know, American dream, which is actually, I would argue, more alive in Canada than in the actual United States, um, because Canada has a much more um, robust social system and, you know, like... I don't know, so stronger middle class, I think. More people are middle class, um, whereas in the United States, you have, I think, more rich people and a lot, lot, lot more poor people. So, but don't move to those countries if you can work online. You want to move to countries that um, are developed enough, but still developing, like in Eastern Europe, where you have like um, costs like uh, dental cleaning. In Canada, that costs... Um, about 200 Canadian dollars or even more plus tax. So it's like two, let's say it's 200 US dollars for a dental cleaning in Canada. Here in Serbia, it costs 20 US dollars. That's 10 times the price if you want to do the same thing in Canada than in Serbia. Stuff like that. Um, cost of a beer in a bar. Here it's about two euros in Canada or let's say it's two US dollars in Canada. It would be about eight US dollars or something. And then you got a tip or I don't know stuff like that. And if the job you're doing is the same, if you speak English as your native language and have a good business culture behind you where you've been working in South Africa, you have a lot in common already with the, um, with the American British culture um, because of media and the colonial legacy in your country. I mean, like, you don't need to, like a lot of the time, the reason people from um, developing countries where English is not um, the main language the reason they need to go to America is to, to learn how to work to the standard of Western, um, Western um, productivity and efficiency. You know, they need to be put in a system. They need to be trained. They need to, you know, work their corporate job and, and have those standards enforced on them. I'm not saying that the working standards and business culture in South Africa are exactly um, the same as they are in the USA. I'm saying that it's a lot closer by default. And if you start working remotely, hopefully the company that you work for remotely will have ways of putting their culture on you, even though you're working remotely, then you should go in a place where you enjoy the weather, the food, the people, the culture, all of that sort of stuff. And um, I would say that probably, okay, Panama is one place we found South Africans moving. Um, I would say another one that's really off the radar of a lot of people is Turkey, um, which is, you know, because it's a Muslim country, people might not um, think that it's that great of a place to live, but it actually is also has a very strong secular tradition and, you know, like um, it's not a hardcore Islamic. There's lots of, you know, very liberal people there, especially in Istanbul and lots of really cool cultural places. You can definitely go out to thousands of different bars in Istanbul that are so happening and so fun and have a drink any night of the week, um, beer, patio, you know, um, you know, lots of uh, and the food in Turkey is amazing and it's so cheap. It's cheaper than South Africa. Um, 
Asia tends to also be a good place to go if you if you want um, year round uh, warm weather like Southeast Asia, like Thailand, Vietnam, if you can get into those places, it's been a little bit harder um, since 2020 to get into those places, hopefully they'll open up soon. Um, but you know there's just so many options for this sort of middle type of country where you have infrastructure like uh, medical care. Like I said, the dental cleaning, a tenth of the cost here in, in Serbia also, um, you know, compared to the US, I'm pretty sure that the private medical clinics would be like a 20th of the cost of uh, like literally 5% of the cost of, of going in the United States, where which has a, the United States, for example, has an absolute, absolutely egregiously predatory capitalist medical um medical industry that really just sucks tons of money out of everybody all the time it's um you need insurance that insurance in the united states costs like 300 dollars a month at least i think i i don't know the details i've never lived in the u.s but um i know how it works i'm from canada where we have socialized medicare where everybody can go but it's you know the doctors still make a lot of money but it's taxpayers money that they make Anyways, there's so many different ways you can do it. Like getting to Turkey is just an e-visa. Um, Panama, I believe, is still visa-free for South Africans, but it made, they made it harder to stay there. I believe if you go to Turkey, you can get a uh, residence um, by just renting an apartment for a year on an annual lease. They'll give you a residence for that. You can get started there. Here in Serbia, you need a visa to enter in the first place, but it's very easy to, um, to actually get residence here. Um, they want to know a bit about you, like what you're doing, and you should probably open up a company or buy some land here, and then you get approved for a residence. And, you know, there's so many possibilities, but if you're happy in South Africa, you might just want to start that remote job and just see how, how bad things can get. Because I know like last month it was bad um, with um, some rioting and after the former Jacob Zuma um, guy was in jail and stuff like that you never know when you would need that insurance policy of having a remote job that you can work from anywhere so my name is eric support adventure i hope you enjoyed this video tell me your comments below and um you know best of luck and um yeah i hope life stays good in south africa gets better whatever but uh have a backup plan i'll catch you guys later